I got uh, many questions regarding what color do I use, how I use them, etc. So I think I will spend uh, this week and the next few tips uh, talking about how I go approach to colors and how I use them in watercolor. Uh, color can be very complicated uh, and the color theory can be uh, very boring, but I will try my best. So what do you see here, this chart, this is the, um, this has 12 colors. All these are the colors that's in my palette as my main uh, go-to colors. I have been using the exactly same group of colors in the past 10 or so years, and it works for me. It may not work for you, but uh, uh, you know, that's how I'm going to explain to you, to you why I'm using this. Um, uh, this one is marked because I no longer use it, so you can ignore that. I put a name uh, under the uh, description of this video, so you can check out the names. The brand is not important, and I don't associated with any uh, brand company, so I don't even uh, need to mention it here. So that's pretty much about the 12 colors I use, mainly two yellows, two blues, two reds, and a few browns, and plus a uh, black, and, and there's an extra um, type of blues. My palette itself is exactly the same as this one. Let me show you. So here is my palette. You probably see in the other uh, tip as well. I blocked these because those are occasional colors and then I use them and take them out and keep them for a while and change them. So we don't need to really worry about it. So these are the 12 colors that I uh, constantly use. My name two yellows, two reds, and the two blues and two other extra blues and a uh, two a few bronze and plus a black. So that's how I uh, use my colors. Um, I like to keep the palette extremely simple, uh, but my main approach is to mix the colors directly on the paper and the utilizing the white paper plus the amount, the under control amount of water with the pigment to achieve my um, uh, desired colors to use uh, in the painting. And uh, so that's about the basics. And you can, again, you can look at the names in the description and those are described all the color names I use here. Today I thought I'm going to share with you about my approach for getting fresh dark colors in watercolor painting. If you look at this reference photo, if you're going to paint a seascape like this or any you know buildings, and then you must have some darks. But if you copy and uh, look at the, this darks in the photo, it's just like uh, not that colorful. If you copy this with your paint, and then the painting usually looks pretty boring or very dull uh, one color darks. So my approach um, is mainly, first, not copy the photos. Second is utilize the um, primary colors in my palette as you can reference as the first part uh, you know the uh, the colors in my palette are very simple but what i want to do is usually for the darks is i reach to the darkest primary colors i can get in my palette and then adjust it with the color temperature and the uh, color in uh, intensity directly on the paper um, 
when I have those mix. So what's the darkest uh, primary colors in my palette? Usually I can go with um, the, the blues I have. So the blues, like uh, ultramarine blue, is very dark if you use a full strength. Okay. Or you can use uh, phthalo blue as well, but phthalo blue is more uh, towards the green um, type of uh, uh, blue. And the second one, the primary within the red group, by comparison, you can see this one, uh, the rose matter um, connector is a lot darker compared to the yellowish red over there. Okay, so I'm going to get these two first. And the third uh, primary color, usually we all know it's yellow. But yellow, you can tell this is a very light one and it's going to lighten up my color. Later when I do the mix, you can see it. So I usually go with uh, the darken, I call them darken agent uh, in my palette. Either go with uh, burnt amber or uh, I use some black uh, to darken the darks if it's really needed. Um, so if you look at my palette, one thing about mixing darks is you have to have the paint that's soft. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a new paints each time, but is the paint that in your palette can be scooped out. So these two, so let's say, you know, ultramarine blue, you can scoop out right away instead of just getting a very thin layer on top of that. And the red, it's the same thing. So if you haven't painted for a while, your paint might just be uh, very uh, uh, dry and even hardened. So in that case, you need to refresh the paints. I also have a video for that, so you can uh, find that uh, in my channel and look at that. So now you see these two already very dark by itself if you use a full strength. So I'm going to mix some darks and you can see if I do the seascape as I pre-draw uh, and here are the dark rocks. So I can do just that. So when these two are together, now you see they towards a uh, very dark color, but it's more of a purple. I don't know whether the video can see it. So using primaries, using fresh primaries when they are soft, so you can scoop out. And the third thing uh, I uh, pay a lot of attention is you need to get a very juicy mix, which means you need quantity uh, instead of just water. So I look at the size of my rocks. I'm thinking, gee, I need a more uh, dark colors. So I'm scooping out more of these. And now the reddish uh, dark, and you can see it's very dark. And in the meantime, I'm adding a little bit of a um, burnt amber. And burnt amber has a hint of uh, yellow in there, which is another primary, which if you use that one, that can lighten up the color. I don't really want it to do that. So that's the part I'm neutralizing this. Uh, so it wouldn't be that purple, but you can see that's how dark and the colorful this is. So I may gray down a little bit with a little bit of black. And now I really have the darks I want. So um, let's say the rock part, uh, I'll start with just one brush. Um, and you can see I'm just testing out, you see how colorful, but um, dark instantly showed um, it's there. So don't know whether the video can see it, but you can see this is a um, very reddish purple-ish uh, under uh, the rock. So I think I will start with that. And in my last video, I also talk about directly mixing colors uh, on the paper. So I'm using a slightly different blue, which this one is a, pur uh, a cobalt blue. So I'm cooling down the, 
the underside of the rock a little bit. And at the top of the rock, actually, there are quite a bit of uh, vegetation. So I'm using a different um, blues to get some grains in there. And uh, uh, you can see I'm mixing this a lot directly on the paper. And that's how you keep your freshness of the darks. Okay, So now I come back here and uh, changing a little bit of the uh, the color direction, add a little bit more of the uh, burnt amber. And I'm doing that. So you see how much I used up already? I haven't even covered half of my rock yet. Okay, so that means you need to have a quantity of darks over there. Start with a lot of primaries, then the changing accordingly. So I wanted to give a slightly difference. Uh, I'll say I will do here. Uh, this is a di distance one. So I think I'm going to lighten up a little bit. So I'll do this small one first. Okay. And um, you see, this is the dark. That's quite a purple. That's a good. It's in the distance, but I wanted to change it a bit. So I'm using a different red, um, changing the color. Bring the color over there too. And um, I'll say give a little bit more brown. So the brown should be a lot less than the primary. Otherwise, it will become pretty dead color, um, the dead brown. So we wanted that, but we want the bronze, but we don't want a dead, boring bronze. So that's how the dark uh, rocks are there. So I'm pulling the rest. You see how much I used it up. You really needed to have a juicy mixture in order to uh, make your uh, darks um, uh, fresh and powerful. So the rest are not that important anymore. So we covered the majority of this and I was changing the color uh, to be cooler directly on the paper. And I'm going to leave this uh, for now. Maybe I will use some white splash uh, instead of covering everywhere. And so that's how the darks are, are done uh, using primaries. Um, so now getting closer, I'm changing. I'm using more of a yellow. You see how much I used it? And then coming back, I do a small rock. Uh, here and there, uh, later I'll connect them uh, when I uh, finish the rest of uh, sand area. You see, this is the um, richness, the color here, show that the rocks that are uh, with a powerful uh, reddish dark, and I'm uh, still changing it with different blues and it will cover a little bit on the top Oops. that's my sponge okay. we'll cover this um, the juicy part of the rock um, is very important when you have the juicy mixture um, you can do this changing to a very various uh, greens, olive colors, and at the top there are some trees. The darks are the same thing. You know, the approach is exactly the same. Um, we just use the primaries as the starting and the finishing point. Okay, You can try it at home and see what you can do with your primary colors and directly on the paper. Thanks for watching.